Do you know what time of year it is? If you said spring, you'd be correct! Partially. Before we begin, I want to make a special announcement, because unless you're in Upside Down Land, it is springtime after all. And with spring comes flowers and leaves and the three-year anniversary of the story you never knew! On April 11th, silly. In honor of that date and the day when our journey as YouTubers changed from a hobby to a hobby that actually pays us, well, used to pay us before this whole YouTube controversy, but yeah, in honor of that, we're going to be having a full week of wooden shenanigans starting on the 11th. This week will henceforth be dubbed Tree Week! And it will run from the 11th through the 20th. Yes, tree week is over a week, but we don't care. We make our own rules! On videos posted between the 11th and the 20th, there will be giveaways and even some exciting announcements. And every video will be tree themed, whatever that means. Now without further ado, let's begin the story you never knew. The gaming industry. What was once a small, relatively unobserved hobby has now boomed into a multi-million dollar industry. And with that boom, we've seen changes to how games are being made. I'm not just talking about new graphics and better controls. The heart and soul of what makes a good game is changing. This industry that began on the backs of arcade games where each set of lives would cost you a quarter now lives right in your home with hundreds of hours of leisurely entertainment at your disposal. We have state-of-the-art graphics, new and amazing franchises, and old games making phenomenal sequels. And yet, there's a problem with the gaming industry. It isn't a new one. It isn't even surprising, really. But it's there. And we've been looking at this issue all wrong. Games? are just too easy! I long for the days of Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. I relish my memories of Super Metroid. I've nearly forgotten what it's like to play a game of true challenge. There are, of course, the exceptions. Super Meat Boy or Dark Souls, for instance. Yet, overall, I cannot help but cry out, why? Why have games gotten so easy despite our technology getting so advanced? Many people have an answer for this question. It's so often asked that one Google search will give you dozens of results on this very topic. But I have a different answer answer to why games have gotten so easy, an answer that definitely proves an awful trend in the gaming industry, one that you must know about if we're ever to see the great legends of gaming revived in our generation. So please, bear with me as I take you through a story of the gaming industry's reality. The story you never knew. To truly understand this issue, I've taken the liberty of grabbing a few games as examples of gaming getting easier. It's important to be able to compare the early generation of gaming to today's generation. So to make the best comparisons, I picked franchises that were alive then and now. That way we can easily compare a game like Super Mario World for the NES with its future descendants like Super Mario Bros Wii and Wii U. And those are the games I'd like to begin with. Now I haven't completely played through Super Mario Bros Wii U, but I have beaten both Super Mario Bros Wii and Super Mario world, so I'll focus more on those two specifically. But everything I say about Super Mario Bros. Wii also applies to the Wii U game. First off, let's look at these two side by side. Forget graphics for a minute, and let's just focus on gameplay. At first glance, these two games look identical. They are essentially the exact same game. You are Mario, or one of the Mario characters. You traverse different levels, eventually get to a castle, fight a Bowser kid, and move on to the next world with the eventual goal of defeating Bowser and saving Princess Peach. Even though more than two decades separate these two games, the basics are exactly the same. And yet, these two games have about as much in common as your sex drive does with your grandma's. There's definitely some overlap, but it's best not to think about it. Because in reality, playing these games back to back is a completely different experience. I can and have played through the entirety of Super Mario Bros. Wii, and never get a single continue. In fact, by the end of the game, I had actually stockpiled over 50 lives. And these stats are based on an all-night gaming session where we played the game for 12 hours straight to beat it. Amazingly enough, I did the exact same thing with Super Mario World. Younger me had no clue he was setting up a controlled scientific gaming experiment when he decided to not study and play video games all night instead. Good job, me! So I went through the exact same scenario, but with Super Mario World. I stayed up with friends and we played Super Mario World from beginning to end without stopping. But there was one drastic change between those two experiments. We needed dozens of continues during our Super Mario World playthrough. The game was made to challenge the player, whereas Super Mario Mario Bros. Wii really isn't. And I'm not saying that the newer game is bad, it's still a fun game. But there was a shift in the idea of how a Super Mario game should be made. 
The newer games are slower. They are designed for leisurely play rather than challenging play. And this is an issue not exclusive to Super Mario. On the contrary, there are many games that have transferred their focus from challenge to leisure. Perhaps the most famous example of this change is Super Smash Bros. As a child of the 90s, I grew up with the Nintendo 64 as my second console, and Super Smash Bros. as the second game I ever had for it. And it was amazing! Super Smash Bros. was challenging, it was addictive, it was multiplayer so you could beat the shit out of your best friends with no hard feelings. Then, in 2001, I got my GameCube, and with it, Super Smash Bros. Melee. This was the pinnacle of challenging gameplay on the cube of games. Characters were fast, you needed to have good reaction time, think quickly, and concentrate on the game. Melee was not made for a leisurely crowd. It was made for people who wanted to sweat while they played a game, and sweat I did. All over my controller. It was super gross. But those sweat stains, they were the stains of a champion! Fast forward to 2008, Super Smash Bros. Brawl was released. In comparison to Melee, Brawl was child's play. It was so slow you could actually feel the input lag from when you pressed a button to when the character responded. Plus, Nintendo took out wave dashing, which made an already slower game feel like molasses compared to its predecessor. Brawl felt like you were waiting for a pot of water to boil compared to the geyser that was Melee. It's not a difficult comparison, just look at the same character in both versions. Take Fox as an example. If you run with Fox in Melee, you feel fast. You have to concentrate to land your move precisely when you want to or else you'll speed past your competitor. But in Brawl, he just feels slow. And then they added Tripping, the abomination of the Smash franchise. Oh, here's the game based completely on skill. Oh, you have to learn how to play different characters well and how to counter other players' picks. Oh, you just got an amazing counter. Time to follow. Oops, sorry, you fell the fuck down. Get your shit together, 2008 Nintendo. Luckily, Smash 4 was a little better in this respect, but even still, Nintendo never returned to the thrill that Melee gave us. So we've come to the conclusion that easier games are generally slower, but this really only applies to games that are action based. Enter Pokemon. Pokemon is already a slow game. It's meant to be played that way. So what possible issue could I possibly have with it? Well, if you played the original games or Silver or Gold or really anything before the newest version, the series is fairly identical. Sure, they add some new items and there's new Pokemon and thank God they added running shoes, but the overall concept of the game never changed. The game's difficulty is completely based off of grinding. Personally, I'm not a fan of this being a difficulty setting. In fact, I am so not a fan of it that I made an entire video ranting about it. But let me put aside my personal feelings about grinding for a second. Pokemon's difficulty is based off of getting through long sections of the game without being able to heal at a Pokemon Center. It's either trainers or wild Pokemon or both trying to attack you. So you had to choose which Pokemon you wanted to gain XP, fight with that Pokemon, but switch them out when they get close to fainting. Heal them if you wanted to keep battling with them, switch them out if they're at a huge type disadvantage. But here's the issue. In Sun and Moon, EXP share completely fucked this system. EXP share now applies to all Pokemon in your party, which completely kills a large part of the difficulty in grinding. Back in my day, if you wanted to get a Gyarados, you had to go through the painstaking process of training your Magikarp through EXP share or through switching it in and out with other Pokemon. Yes, doing it that way was tiring and difficult, but at the end you got rewarded for your effort. You worked to make this dumb piece of sashimi into a badass water dragon and you felt like you achieved something when that fish evolved. Now you just throw it in the back of your party and wait! There's no choice of who gets XP. He'll get some no matter what I do. Again, it's a shift in idea. Games no longer reward you for putting in hard work. They are made to be easier and avoid that difficulty. And there's more game franchises that fit this category, and they aren't all Nintendo games either. Many people have complained about the Resident Evil franchise getting easier, or the obvious difference in difficulty between Fable 2 and Fable 3. Plus, the addition of many new video game tropes are also hurting games that could be more challenging. Regenerating health is just one example of a video game trope that makes so many games easier than they needed to be. Just hide behind a wall and regain health. Doesn't matter if you take one bullet to the head or 100. As long as there's enough time in between, you'll be fine. The point is, there's no doubt the majority of games are easier than those of the previous generation, and most people blame the rise of the casual gamer for this problem. But what if I told you that there's another reason for games getting easier? It isn't just that more people are playing games, it's who specifically plays the most games games and who has the most influence over the money spent on games. What demographic are these games being pushed towards? The answer? 
Rocky's kids. Kids who have parents with wallets full of cash and credit cards and want their children to be happy. But children don't want to play something challenging or frustrating. They want something colorful and easy, with simple controls that parents can plop them down in front of for hours. Games are being marketed and made for kids in mass bulk, so even though you want something challenging and fun, you'll get something designed for someone younger. Now I better have some proof to back this up. To the interwebs! Let's look at some articles, shall we? Let's begin with Halo, an M-rated game. According to this article, Halo was cross-promoted with Megablocks, a toy intended for ages 8 and up. Why would an M-rated game be cross-promoting with a children's toy if not to get these same young kids playing their game? Halo, an M-rated game based on intergalactic warfare, is being marketed to children, not teens or adults. Kids. Here's another site articulating the same message. The title says everything you need to know. Video games are being marketed to children. The article goes on to explain how children lack the impulse control of an adult, so they see something and instead of weighing the cost of it, they just ask for it. And so their parents buy it for them without a second glance. Now you might think that parents care about the age ratings of games, but think again. According to an ESRB study, one third of parents don't care about a game's rating before buying the game for their kid. In fact, a store owner owner made their own article titled, I sold too many copies of GTA 5 to parents who didn't give a damn. He described selling over a thousand copies of GTA 5 to parents of younger kids. A thousand copies! How did these kids learn about GTA 5? How did they know it was out? It was advertised to them, because their parents have the money to buy games. A college student, a teenager, someone just out of school, they don't have the money to throw down 60 bucks on a game, much less the hundreds of dollars on a console. These sales are going through parents, and the game are going to children. Gaming companies are making games that seem mature, but in reality their gameplay is so easy that even a child could play it, because they were designed for children to play them. And if all that wasn't enough, take a look at this graph. From 2003 to 2007, games rated E or E10 dominated the gaming market. Every year, over 60% of games are rated for people 12 years of age or younger, with 2007 taking the cake at 74% of games being rated E or E10. Meanwhile, the percentage of mature games plummeted down to only 6%. Definitive proof that the gaming industry isn't making games for the casual gamer, but for the younger gamer. Or is it? What if I told you that everything from this video, everything I said, was to bring you to the wrong conclusion? All these articles and statistics, while all true, were spun in such a way to prove that video games are made for children, when in reality, they aren't. I purposefully left out things like this graph, which shows that mature games are currently at their highest since 2005, while E-rated games are at an all-time low. I gave you outdated graphs and articles, and left out information that you could have used to get a more educated understanding on what is really happening in the gaming industry. In reality, the average gamer is 35 years old. The most popular games in the world are mostly mature and teen games. Just look at this list of top 20 selling computer games from 2014. Nearly all all of them are teen or mature rated. On top of that, there was a massive flaw in my argument. Just because a game is rated E doesn't mean that it's for kids. Many games, like Mario Party, are for everyone, yet their difficulty depends on the people you're playing against. Many games are easier than they were in the 90s. There's no question about that trend, but it has much more to do with gaming evolving from a nerd hobby into a modern day trend. Companies want to reach as many people as possible, so they make a game that the best player can play, but the worst player can enjoy it too. Assassin's Creed is easy as fuck. You can parry all day with no punishment, but hardcore and casual gamers can enjoy it. Video games are marketed at kids, but not because they're the best source of money. They target kids so they will be gamers for life. Because children are easy to influence, and if you start them on playing games early, then they will be playing games forever. You might be asking why I went through the pains of making an entire video I knew wasn't true. The point was to show you how easy it is to be misled. You came here for entertainment, and because you were interested in the topic, but I want you to leave more independent in your thinking. I was able to fool you into believing something that wasn't true in just one video. And while it's pretty cool that you actually ended up being the subject of this video, it should make you think about who else is doing the exact same thing I did, but without showing their cards in the end. Being misled is easier than you think it is, and if I can do it about video games, others can do it about more important topics. This lesson was an easy one because I wanted you to know what I was doing, but next time someone tries to trick you, don't let them do it so easily. Knowledge, questions, and research are your tools in life. You Use them and succeed, or don't, and be fooled. The choice is yours, but the real question is, did you learn your lesson or not? Only time will tell. And that's the story!
You never knew. Also, I didn't actually stay up all night beating Super Mario World. That was our editor, Tyler. People lie sometimes to make a point. It's terrible! Hey guys, it's Kevin, and I have a special announcement to make. It's pretty weird announcing it, but I'm leaving Treesicle. And no, this isn't an awkwardly late April Fool's joke. Most of you probably don't know me very well, but pretty much Treesicle is four people, and I was one of those four people since pretty much the start, which was over three years ago. So yeah, I'm actually leaving. There wasn't some big dramatic fallout, I just wasn't feeling fulfilled doing the work I was doing. So after a lot of thinking, like a lot, I decided that this would be best for everybody. I hope you understand, and I hope you enjoyed some of the work I was a part of over the last three years. It was really awesome building something with three of my best friends. But all of that was only possible because of viewers like you. So thanks, and goodbye.